Hi, this is Anne from Music Discoveries, where I share music that is tailored to help you along your harp journey. In this video, I'm going to share a simple arrangement of Amazing Grace. Plus, I'll give you some tips for learning this piece. So let's get started. This arrangement of Amazing Grace is really a very useful one. If you're new to the harp, I think you'll find it quite accessible. I've added all of the fingering and brackets to help you navigate fluently. Plus, in just a few minutes, I'll be showing you a few learning tips to help you learn the piece. If you have a small harp, say with 25 or 26 strings, you're going to be able to play this arrangement. So it's a really nice selection to have in your harp therapy repertoire. Plus, as a bonus, the download includes two versions. I did a version in C major and also G major. And I did that because I thought maybe you'd want to sing along and I figured that one of those keys might be a preference for your voice. And finally, you'll notice that I've added all of the chord symbols with this arrangement. And so that gives you a lot of flexibility. If you're more advanced or if you're playing on a larger harp, you can easily expand the piece or even improvise to lengthen it. Now we're going to begin with the music. I'll perform the C major version and then the G major version for you. And then we'll come back and I'll give you a couple learning tips to help you along the way. And I'll let you know about a special bonus offer that could be very interesting and useful for you. So let's get started. Amazing Grace gives you the opportunity to learn how to count triplet rhythms. Now you can probably play the rhythm by ear, but I would like to challenge you to really learn how to count your triplets. So I've designed a worksheet to help you practice. So let's go take a look at that. Okay, so here's the bonus page on how to count triplets. Now I've taken this PDF and loaded it into my iPad and I'm looking at it through an app called Note Shelf 2, uh, which I'm using because I'm going to mark on my file, but you could easily just print this PDF and put it in a binder for you to use that way. 
So when you're in a time signature of 3-4 or 4-4 four, four time, the basic beat is a quarter note. So a quarter note is equal to one beat and we simply count that one. If we take our beat and we subdivide it into two equal parts, that will make two eighth notes, which we count one and, and we use the plus sign for and. If you take the basic beat and subdivide it into three equal parts, then we have a triplet. Now you'll count the triplet one and a, uh, or some people say one triplet, but I like to use one and a. Uh. And then of course, the rest, which is equal to a quarter note, is a quarter rest. And that also is one beat, but one beat of silence. So these are the note values that we'll be working with in our rhythms and your strategy for how to count them. Now if I scroll um, down the page, you'll see that I've added several rhythms for us to practice with some different challenges. Now challenge number one is to write in the full measure counting. So I started us off with one and a two and a three, four, and then I'd invite you to continue with one and a two, three and a four and so forth. You wanna have a solid strategy for how to count rhythms and writing it into your music is a really good way to practice. The next challenge is to count these rhythms out loud while you tap the rhythm. So um, make sure that you make yourself count out loud. I know that that can be more difficult and it, and it is more difficult for your brain, but it's a really important part of internalizing this concept. So I, I'm just going to do the first rhythm here. You can join me if you'd like to. It'll sound like this. One, two, ready, begin. One and a two and a three, four. One and a two, three and a four. And you can complete all of the rhythms. The third challenge is to, to count and tap the rhythm, but set your metronome. So this is a great, some of you um, think that it's difficult to play with the metronome and, and it can be if you haven't developed the skill. So using the metronome with a rhythm is a really good way to build your skill. So I'm gonna set my metronome, isn't he so cute? I'm gonna set my metronome to a 60. You could try a 60 or an 80 or a 100. 60 is nice and comfortable. And we're gonna count and tap the rhythm. Ready, begin. One and a two and a three, four. One and a two, three and a four, and so on. And then the final challenge is a coordination challenge. And what I want you to do is tap the basic beat with your left hand. So the left hand is the metronome and tap the rhythm with your right hand. So that is gonna look like this. I'm gonna start my left hand first. One, two, three, four. One and a two and a three, four. One and a two, three and a four. And I know that looks pretty easy when I do it, but it's actually a little bit challenging. And I would, can, I would encourage you to, to tackle the challenge and train your brain and your body to do that. So um, if you're interested in those bonus pages, that link is available down in the description and it is a free download. Now I've kept the technical skills very manageable in this piece, but there is an opportunity for you to work on crossing your hands in an arpeggio. So there are two places where the hands play uh, triads and the left hand will be crossing over the right. Now I call this a leap and land. So you have to train your left hand to learn to place early and accurately so that you feel at ease and fluent when you play. So here's my quick tip for you. If you want, if you're at your harp, you can do this with me. If not, you can just watch and try this later at your harp. What you'll want to do is place three, two, one, and three, two, one on a C major triad in each hand. Remember about hovering over the strings, open and place as a group. That's hop, 
hover open place. You can even give those strings a little squeeze, which is hops, hover open place and squeeze. Now what you'll do is move the left hand from the triad in the bass up to the C and G above the right hand. And I want you to do this without letting go of your right hand strings. So you'll go back and forth from your left hand triad up to the left hand fifth and back and forth. Give the strings a little squeeze and up you go without moving the right hand. So you're training your left hand to leap accurately and also to place those two strings at the same time. Now, when you actually play the six notes of the arpeggio, notice that your left hand will land before the right hand plays. So watch that happen. Land. So I'm there early, I'm there accurately, and that's going to help me feel very uh, fluent and at ease when those two spots come in the piece. Now I've designed a short study uh, that you're welcome to play and it takes you through a series of chords with arpeggios so you can practice that technique many times and that's a really useful technique to know for your pieces. If you play others of mine you'll know that I love arpeggios. Crossing hand arpeggios sound really beautiful. So if you're interested in the bonus pages which included the triplet worksheet and also the Leap and Land Arpeggio study, you can get that PDF for free and I'll just put the link to that file down in the description below. You just need to sign up and then it uh, will come to you. Now my arrangement of Amazing Grace is available at the Music Discovery shop of course and that link is down in the description as well so I'd invite you to hop over there and get your download and remember that that download comes with two versions both C major and G major. So have fun with your heart playing and I will see you in the next video.